This system, sitting on the table here next to me like an open boil on somebody's face, is that terrible old iBuy power system that I've done a couple of videos on before. Now I really didn't want to have to do another video on this damn thing, but I had an idea about how to potentially fix the bad performance on it, which I can't stop thinking about, so here we are. Now for those of you that missed the previous videos on this system, basically I'm getting some pretty bad gaming performance from it because the motherboard has a really terrible 3 plus 1 phase VRM which struggles to deliver enough power to the 8 core FX bull loser CPU which results in low clock speeds and bad gaming performance. Using this VRM with this CPU is a little bit like trying to power your Tesla with a hand crank. It may technically get it running, but it's definitely not going to result in the optimum Tesla driving experience, and it's probably going to result in some pretty terrible wanker scrap. So let's see if we can help out this VRM and get some better gaming performance. Now I just want to preface all of this by saying I am by no means an expert on well anything, but especially not when it comes to VRM power design. Now unfortunately there isn't some idiot friendly resource pointing out the limitations of this VRM, uh, so yeah I kind of had to piece together a little bit of information myself. All of the documentation available is like from companies for electrical engineers to figure out whether or not they can use the componentry in their design. My relationship with this kind of documentation is like a vampire's relationship with garlic. It's, it's why is there so much math in it? The only thing that I know is that under load, this VRM runs at 75 degrees Celsius, which is pretty hot, especially considering the fact that the VRM control chip has a max rated temperature of 70 degrees Celsius. And then there's this graph which actually talks about the percentage of the max rated output that is safe at a given temperature for the power MOSFETs in this VRM design. And as you can see, at 75 degrees Celsius, it's only safe to use about 60% of the max that this chip can actually deal with. So if you drop the temperatures, maybe you should be able to get more power into the chip without the VRM blowing up. At least that's my theory. So let's see if it works. Now here are the results. Now with no additional cooling on the VRM, so basically just the stock configuration, we were getting an average frame rate in GTA 5 of 78 frames per second. And we were again getting about 108 watts of power draw and a temperature of about 75 degrees Celsius. Now the first step is to just add a little fan over here to see if we can cool down the VRM a bit because it is extremely hot. You can feel the hot air radiating off it. So let's see if that makes any difference. We went from about 75 degrees Celsius to about 68 degrees Celsius. I didn't do any additional overclocking, but we got a bit more performance. We got 79.7 .7 frames per second as an average in GTA 5. So it's already working, which is pretty exciting. Now the next step is to actually add a heatsink to the VRM. And I decided to go with this thing, which it looks a little bit like the heatsink on an old OCZ memory module. I don't know if you remember them. They used to make like really good RAM back in the day. And I don't know what they do anymore. Maybe they're just turning tricks on the street or whatever. But <laughs> anyway, it, it looks a little bit like that, but it isn't like that. It's an M.2 NVMe drive cooling thing, which also has RGB on it for some reason. Um, but it's the perfect size to fit over the VRM. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut a bit of thermal pad so that we can actually stick this M.2 uh, cooler down on the VRM and then see how much of a temperature difference that makes and if that translates into better overclocking. Oops, there goes the fan, but there we go. There is the thermal pad uh, that will hopefully interface well. It's always the most annoying part about thermal pads is getting the top bit of plastic off. And then I'm just kind of stick it down like that. There we go. That actually looks like it's meant to be there, you know? I also blew a fan at it though. So we were getting about 55 degrees C on the VRM, which is a whole 20 degrees cooler, which is pretty good. As far as performance goes, we were getting 
Well, we were getting 82.2 as an average, which is a pretty big jump from the 78. I mean, it's not a pretty big jump, but there is more performance, which is pretty cool. Now, after this small success, I decided to see if I could overclock the CPU further because we were sitting at a core clock of about 3.68 gigahertz. Uh, but I, I, I just couldn't get a higher core frequency going. I, it would just crash every single time that I booted it with anything higher than about 3.68 gigahertz. I got 3.7 working very briefly, but then it just blue screened again. So, so that didn't work. Now I have to admit, I'm actually really surprised by how much heat this little VRM generates. I can't believe that Gigabyte didn't actually put a heatsink on it. Now, there is good thermal contact between the VRM and the actual heatsink because it gets very hot very quickly. I think it's just that the little heatsink can't actually handle the VRM. I think you need more cooling capacity. Uh, but do bear in mind that heatsink is, is pretty terrible. It's not an amazing cooling device, but I, I thought it would be enough to handle the little three-phase power delivery. Now, I did think about adding a bigger heatsink, but I don't have anything available that'll actually fit on there. And yeah, in all honesty, I think this is just a bit of a failed experiment. We got a little bit more performance, but it's not gonna be enough to get a significant overclock out of the CPU. And besides, it refuses to boot with the overclock when temperatures on the VRM are very low. So even if you do like a cold start, it, it just refuses to boot. So I think there is some other stability issue going on. So at the end of the day, uh, we got a little bit more performance, but it, it didn't make a huge difference because unfortunately we couldn't overclock it more. The max power usage of the CPU did rise a little bit, but I mean, it went from 108 to like 111 watts. That's definitely within the margin of error. So yeah, it, it, didn't, it didn't work very well. But I had to know, right? When I had the idea, I was just like, I really need to see if we can push this three-phase VRM to its limit with better cooling. And that got us a tiny bit more performance. So with that, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And until the next one, bye-bye.